In this video, I'm going to describe how to build a basic PIC32 circuit, just the bare minimum amount of connections that you need to make to power the PIC and be able to program it. And we'll also add an LED and a user button so that we have some inputs and outputs to play with. Here's a quick view of what that circuit looks like when it's done. We're powering the board using a USB cable and that 5 volts is going into our 3.3 volt regulator. And we've got a little indicator LED here to know that everything is plugged in. Here's our PIC32 MX170F256B. It's a uh, dip style PIC, the 100 series, which doesn't have USB. It has 28 pins, uh, but you can see a lot of them are going to be used up just for this bare minimum setup. We've got a reset button, um, so when we push that, the PIC uh, stops the code it's running and starts over from the beginning. Um, I've got a user button and a user LED. Uh, this little blue chip is our crystal resonator at 8 MHz. The PIC internally is taking that 8 MHz and turning it into 48 MHz. And then this is our snap programming device. It's got a little black arrow that indicates pin 1. That's the, uh, the reset pin. So that plugs into these extra long header pins so it can fit into the board like this when we're programming. Uh, I like to take it out when I'm not programming because it's kind of in the way. So let's take a quick look at the data sheet for this particular series of PIC um, to see what its capabilities are and what it suggests for the minimum connections. So here I'm looking at the data sheet for the PIC. It's 350 pages. This is the uh, first page for the 100 and 200 series. This is the only version of the PIC32 that comes in a DIP format that we can plug into a breadboard. It has a maximum speed of 50 megahertz, uh, so we're going to because of our 8 megahertz clock, only be able to hit 48 megahertz. And it's a general purpose microcontroller, so it has PWM and an analog to digital converter and I2S and I2C and SPI digital communication. What we're interested in right now, um, here's the, the, the pinout. We have the dip version of this chip. We can see it's the 170F256B. This data sheet covers a lot of different uh, picks that are kind of similar, so you want to pay close attention to make sure every time you look at a page it covers our specific pick. <clears throat> and here's what um, each pin is capable of doing or has to be plugged into. Just notice that um, the top left of the chip has a little dot, that's pin 1. This goes down to pin uh, 14 and then 15 back up to 28, so it goes <clears throat> uh, counterclockwise. Uh, but this table here doesn't go counterclockwise, it goes 14 to 15, so this column over here should be kind of flipped. Um, just, just be careful when you're looking at that. These are the actual pin numbers and uh, they don't match exactly how the, the chip is oriented. <clears throat> um, so what are the main connections here? MCLR, that's our reset, so that has to go to a button that's reset. Uh, anything that says VSS or AVSS, that's ground. Anything that's VDD or VDDD, AVDD, that's power, so that's where 3.3 volts goes. Internally, the PIC actually runs at 1.8 volts, so it has an internal voltage regulator. Uh, so we could look at that 1.8 volts on this VCAP pin, and VCAP is supposed to get a 10 microfarad capacitor externally. Um, to keep the power supply stable right next to the chip, we're also supposed to add a uh, 0.1 or 1 microfarad capacitor from VDD to VSS uh, as close as possible to the chip. Um, and that's when there's little fluctuations in the power supply. That smaller uh, capacitor should like buffer uh, the chip so it doesn't reset by accident. Uh, OSC1 and OSC2, those are the pins where the oscillator should go, so we're using an 8 MHz crystal resonator, um, so it'll connect to those two pins. And then uh, PGED and PGEC, that's the clock and the data line for the programmer, and there's a few options there, 1, 2, and 3. We'll use the first set for now. Um, so the SNAP programmer will make the connections to power ground, reset, and PGED and PGEC. And for now, we're also going to add a, an LED on A4 and a button on B4, uh, just so that we have something to play with. Now, how did I know uh, what those minimum connections were? This is a little bit further down in the data sheet. And um, we're going to do a little simplification here. The reset pin. Um, they put a 1K uh, resistor in series and the capacitor here. We're going to ditch those and just put a button to ground instead. This is a more generic pick, so it has a lot more VBDs and VSs than our chip does. 
Um, you can see they want you to put a capacitor between every VDD and VSS. And then the programmer, they call it a general purpose, the ICSP. We're using specifically the snap. Uh, pin 1 of the snap goes to MCLR, and then pin 2 is power. And in this case, the snap just identifies that there is power on the pick. Uh, it's not providing power. And there's ground connection, and then uh, pin 4 is the uh, data line, and pin 5 is the clock line. And then the snap has a bunch of more pins that we're not going to use. They don't seem to do anything. So 6, 7, and 8 on the snap uh, are no connects. So how uh, before you go building any circuit, you should always build uh, and draw the circuit diagram. So we already know that we have a 5-volt line going to our voltage regulator, and that outputs 3.3 volts. And we put a uh, 0.1 microfarad here, and we put a 1 microfarad and a 10 microfarad over here. And then we had a uh, red LED. So that's our circuit diagram so far. Now we've decided how are we going to demonstrate what the pick is. So the pick is kind of a block. And if we wanted to, we could draw every single pin. But in this case, we, we don't want to draw every pin because it's not necessary yet. Uh, but we have all of our VDDs. Uh, those will go to 3.3 volts. And then we have our VSS pins. Those are going to go to ground. Uh, between those are supposed to be uh, the capacitors. So we, rather than drawing it right here, which will make it messy, I'm going to label it 3.3 volts um, to ground with a maybe it's a 1 microfarad or 0.1 microfarad. And as many of these as we need to go between all the VDDs and all the VSSs. And as inputs, we have something like uh, OSC1 and OSC2. And we have our uh, resonator chip that has a ground connection in the middle, and it's two outside pins uh, go to the oscillator. There's a uh, V-cap pin that's going to output 1.8 volts, and we have to give it a uh, 10 microfarad capacitor. Uh, we have the snap. Um, and so the snap has a 3.3 volts and a ground and it has an MCLR, and a data, and a clock. And so data and clock, we're gonna to go to the pick and we would identify the pins that are there. And then MCLR has to be connected to this. MCLR gets pretty messy. Uh, so one thing you can do if, if you know the wires start to get messy, we just label this reset. And I'll label this one reset. So we know internally, like, all the resets are connected to all the resets. Kind of like we understand that all 3.3s are connected to the 3.3s. Okay, so what are we missing? Um, we've got the, the clock that sets our frequency. We've got a reset pin. Uh, we've got all our powers and grounds. We've got the connections for the programmer. Um, I think the last thing we want are, uh, we're going to use A4. So pin A4 somewhere on the pick. That's going to be for uh, an LED uh, so that we can uh, turn it on and blink it. So that should be a 330. Maybe we'll use green there. And we'll have a B4 pin. Um, so we'll have another B4. And we're going to use this as our user button. So uh, we're going to do uh, from 3.3 volts to a resistor to the button to ground. And the voltage in between is what goes to B4. So this button circuit, uh, when the button is not being pushed, it's like it's not even there. So the voltage that B4 sees is 3.3 volts. When the button is pushed, uh, that voltage gets grounded. So a pushed voltage will be uh, logic 0. Um, the current that goes from 3.3 uh, to ground is set by this resistor. So we'll use a 10K um, so that uh, very little current is used. And basically, we call this a pull-up resistor. Uh, it makes sure that uh, the voltage does not float. It's not in a condition we don't know. It's either high when the button is not being pushed or low when the button is being pushed. Uh, the MCLR, the reset pin, also needs a pull-up resistor 
um, and a button to ground. That's how we reset the pick. So we'll build another one of these to go to reset. So let's look at the board uh, one more time, a couple more tricks that I've got going on here. Um, I've put power and ground into the rails of both sides of the board. So my red rail is 3.3 and the blue is ground on both sides. I've connected them to each other on the bottom. Um, so that's how I'm pulling off all my powers and grounds. I'm putting my capacitors kind of as close to the chip as I can get them. Um, I made the oscillator also as close as we can get because that's that's a one of them is kind of like a sine wave and the other is a little bit more like a square wave but eight megahertz is pretty fast for a like a breadboard connection so we want to make those wires as short as we can also kind of like equal length going to the oscillator pins. Uh, we don't see anything happen when I push the reset button but internally whatever code was running on the pick would restart every time I push the reset button and then the particular code that we're going to do next uh, when the user button is pushed. I will blink the green LED twice, half a second on, half a second off.